In this video, there are five practice net ionic equations and explanations on how to write each one of them. So each equation, it highlights an essential big idea in writing net ionic equations, and they get harder as you go. The times are listed for each video, so if you want to jump forward to somewhere where you're having particular problems, you can do that, or you can work your way through the whole video. Let's get started with a pretty simple one. This first equation, it's a single displacement reaction, and this is the molecular equation. Everything's in compounds. There's nothing broken up into ions. We need to balance the molecular equation as our first step in writing net ionic equations. So it looks like if I put a 2, it's so my coefficient in front of HCl, I'll have two hydrogens, I have two here, two chlorines, I have two here, and then the one magnesium. So this is balanced. After that, I need to write the state of each substance. When you see something like magnesium all by itself, there's no plus or minus, that's going to be a solid. HCl, strong acid, that's going to be aqueous. It'll dissolve in water. Magnesium chloride, chlorides tend to be soluble in water, so we're going to put an aqueous after that. And then hydrogen, that's a gas. So these are the states for each compound, each substance here in this reaction. After we have the states, now we've got to split the strong electrolytes into ions. And this is going to give us the complete ionic equation. We can't split Mg, it's just one thing. HCl, we said it's a strong electrolyte, it's a strong acid. We know from the periodic table, hydrogen is in group 1. It has a 1 plus charge. Chlorine has a 1 minus. Magnesium, group 2, that has a 2 plus charge. It's in group 2. And then chlorine, we said, is 1 minus. Hydrogen, that's a gas. Gases, we don't break apart. So now we have all the information to write the complete net ionic. Mg, from the magnesium, I won't write the state right now, we'll do that at the end, plus H+, plus, that's the hydrogen ion, and we have two of them, so we need to put a 2 in front of that, plus we have Cl-, minus, chloride ion, and this 2 applies to everything, so we have two of those, and that'll give us Mg2+, plus, plus the Cl-, minus. that's the chloride ion, we have two of these Cl-, minuses. we need a coefficient of 2 there, plus just the hydrogen gas, H2. We won't break that up. That's the complete ionic equation, and we're pretty much done now. All we need to do is cross out the spectator ions. These are ions that appear on both sides. They're the same on both sides. And the only thing that's the same on both sides is this Cl-. minus. So we have two Cl- minuses here and two Cl- minuses here, and we're done. This is the net ionic equation, and we'd write it out like this. So that's the net ionic equation for this reaction. As we move on, we'll learn a few more exceptions and little rules, but pretty much this is how we do them. So one of the big ideas is we have a molecular equation. In that molecular equation, we haven't broken these strong electrolytes down into their ions. We also need to balance that molecular equation before we move on to write the complete ionic. For the complete ionic equation, that's everything, and these strong electrolytes, they're broken down into their ions and we took into account coefficients and subscripts when we did that. Once we have the complete ionic, we can cross out the things that are the same on both sides, and that gives us our net ionic equation. So this reaction is a little more complicated looking, but it's the same process. We have a molecular equation here, and we need to balance it. We could put a 2 here, and then a 2 in front of the sodium nitrate, and that would balance the equation. Once we balance it, we look at the states. We can usually assume that what we've been given is going to be aqueous here, and we know that nitric acid, that's a strong acid, that's going to be aqueous, that'll break apart. If you've memorized the solubility rules, you know that nitrates in general are very soluble. If you're able to look this up on a solubility chart, you'll also see that this is soluble. That means it'll dissolve in water, and we can write an AQ after it. Water itself, that's a liquid, and carbon dioxide, that's a gas. So we have our states. So now we can split the strong electrolytes up into ions. That's the complete ionic equation we're talking about. One problem people have is, how do you know what the ions are? So you can look at the periodic table for things like sodium. That's in group 1, so that'll have a 1 plus charge. Then you get to this carbonate here. This is a polyatomic ion, and you have to either memorize these or be able to look them up on a table of common polyatomic ions. So the carbonate, if you look it up, that has a 2 minus charge. Hydrogen, group 1, that's got a one plus charge, and the nitrate, NO3, that's one minus. You can look that up as well. This is a good one to memorize. 
On the product side, we said sodium's in group one, so it has a one plus charge, and the nitrate was one minus. And then water, H2O, we don't split liquids apart into their ions. They stay together. Same for gases, CO2, that's gonna stay together. So we have our states, and we use the periodic table to find this charge here, and then we look this up in a table of common polyatomic ions, or we memorize it. From here on out, it's the same process. Strong electrolytes, these ones with AQ after them, we split up. Water, which is a liquid, we don't split that up. And the gas, carbon dioxide, we don't split that up either. So we should have a total ionic equation that looks like this. So this is the complete or total ionic equation. We have everything here with all the electrolytes, strong electrolytes, split up into their ions. We can now cross out the spectator ions. These are the ions on both sides, which really means nothing happened to them. They didn't change. We have two Na plus here and two Na plus here. Then we have two NO3 minus here and two NO3 minus here, but everything else is different. So let's write this as our net ionic equation. So it's important to note that charge is conserved in net ionic equations. We have a two minus here, we have a one plus, but we have two of them. So this cancels out and gives us a total charge of zero on this side. There's no charge over here. Charge is conserved. So one thing that gives people problems is how to find the ionic charge. You need to split these strong electrolytes up into their ions. How do you know what the charge is? The periodic table is organized to help you do that. Group one, they're all one plus. We saw that with sodium. Group two, like the magnesium, they're all two plus. The transition metals, we don't really know. We have to look at what they're bonded to, usually things over here to figure their charge out. But then we can look at things like fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. They're all one minus. But what about things like CO3 two minus or SO4 two minus? Those are polyatomic ions, and we look those up on a table of common polyatomic ions, or we memorize the names. So when you see something like SO4 two minus or NO3 minus, you'll know that you need to either look it up or have memorized its name. So that's how you find the ionic charge when you're writing your net ionics. So now that we know how to find the charge on these different ions, Let's try this one. There's quite a few polyatomic ions here. First though, we need to balance the equation. Bam. Easy, right? Now that we've got the balanced molecular equation, we need to write the states for each substance. We're going to assume that these are soluble since they gave them to us, and we'll write an AQ. Ammonium salts, they're usually soluble, so we're going to write AQ, and I could know that by memorizing it or looking it up on a table. And then aluminum carbonate. Carbonates are often not soluble, but I can look it up and see that it's insoluble. It doesn't dissolve. So it's going to stay together. That means it's going to be a solid. In fact, when this reaction happens, this will actually fall to the bottom of the test tube. This is going to be a precipitate. So we have our states. Now we're going to split the electrolytes into ions for that complete ionic equation. Let's bring that table back up so we can look at these ions. So we have our table, and you can memorize this, or if you're allowed, you can just use the table. NH4 is the ammonium ion. It's a polyatomic. It's one of the few positive polyatomics. That's a one plus. Then we have CO3. That's our carbonate, CO3 two minus. Aluminum, that's not here. We'd have to go back to that periodic table. Aluminum has a three plus charge. Nitrate, one minus. Then we add a plus and a minus. And this is a solid. So for solids, we leave it together. Just like liquids and gases, we don't break up solids. They're sitting at the bottom of the test tube, so they're not going to break apart into their ions. So we have this. We can now write the complete ionic equation. That'll look like this. So with the complete ionic equation, you can check to make sure it's right because it should be balanced. You should have the same number of each atom on both sides, and charge should be conserved as well. We can now cross out the spectator ions. We have six ammonium ions on both sides, and then we have six nitrates. So once we've done that, we can clean it up and write the net ionic equation. So that's the net ionic equation, charge, it's conserved, and matter's conserved. We've balanced this equation. Everything adds up the same on both sides. Often you'll be given a reaction where in the products, you're not told whether it's soluble in water, whether it breaks apart into its ions. In that case, how do you know if it's soluble? Take, for example, KNO3, potassium nitrate. So there's two ways we can know. The first is you can memorize some solubility rules. These are the more basic solubility rules. 
So I can look down here and see that the nitrate ion, they're generally soluble. So I would expect that this would be soluble. I could also look it up on a solubility table. You're sometimes allowed to use these in class, so check with your teacher. But we look at potassium, we go across to where it hits nitrate right here, nitrate and potassium. It says S and S means soluble. So this is going to be soluble and dissolve in water. Let's try another one. So we find calcium and then we find the sulfate. We see where they meet and it says SS, which is slightly soluble. That means just a little bit of it will dissolve. And because of that, we consider that this doesn't dissociate in water. It doesn't dissolve in water. And we wouldn't split it apart into its ions. If we check the solubility rules, we'd see that most sulfates are soluble, except there it is, calcium sulfate. So these general rules are very helpful, save you a lot of time. The table, if you're allowed to use it, that's great too. So for this net ionic equation, we're going to deal with HNO2, which is a weak acid. But first, let's balance our molecular equation. Next, you need to write the states. So this is going to be considered aqueous, but it's not going to dissociate into its ion. So it's going to dissolve. It's going to be dissolved in the water, but it doesn't break apart. Only a little bit because it's a weak acid. Calcium hydroxide, that's a strong base. That's going to be dissociated completely. That's aqueous. And then calcium nitrate, we could look that up on the solubility table, or if we know the rules for it, we could remember those. That's going to be aqueous. And then water, that's a liquid, so it won't split apart. Let's split the strong electrolytes up into their ions. This is not a strong electrolyte. It's a weak acid. Weak acids stay together. So we just write 2HNO2, and we would put aqueous after that. We'll do that at the end. We have our calcium, which we know from the periodic tables, 2 plus. We have hydroxide. That's 1 minus. So we have OH, the minus. But we have two of them. So we're going to put our 2 there. And then this will split apart into the calcium ion plus the two nitrite ions. We look those up on the table of common polyatomic ions. That's NO2 minus plus the two water molecules. Let's clean this up a bit. So the key here is we identified this as a weak acid. And because of that, we didn't break it apart into its ions. And as I look at this to make sure everything's the same on both sides, I notice something interesting. I have a total of two times two H's here and two H's here. So I have four H's. That's all good. Calcium one here, one here. But this nitrite, I have two nitrites here and only one here, and that concerns me. So it's always good to check. I can see up above that I forgot to take into account this two right here. So I should have two nitrites, not just the one like I had it. So it's important to check your work. It's pretty easy to do. You'll catch your errors quite often. Okay, so this is the complete ionic equation. Now when we cross things out, we've got Ca2+, plus, and that's the only thing that's different. So now we can write the net ionic equation. Since we have twos in front of everything, let's get rid of those so we have it as simple as possible. And that's the net ionic equation for this reaction. Let's talk about those strong and weak acids and how you identify those for a moment, though. So we said that strong acids and strong bases, they break apart, dissociate completely. So they're strong electrolytes, and we separate them into their ions. Where the weak acids and bases, they don't break apart. We consider them aqueous, but they have not dissociated, so they've not split into ions. I recommend memorizing the strong acids, and then the strong bases, they end in OH, but this is all group 1 and group 2. So if you remember group 1 and group 2 hydroxides, those are strong bases. The weak acids, pretty much anything that's not over here, but this CH3COOH, this acetic acid, that's a good one to know, phosphoric acid as well. And then the weak bases, NH3, that's one that you should know. And we'll see that in the next problem. One last net ionic equation here. We have NH3, and we said that's one of those weak bases. So let's do one with NH3. First, we balance the equation. Boom. Next, we write the state. So NH3, it's aqueous, which means it dissolves in water, but it doesn't break apart. Very little bit breaks apart. So we consider it aqueous, but when we write the ions, we're not going to split this up. Sulfuric acid, that's one of our strong acids. That is going to dissociate, break apart completely into its ions. And then we can look this up on our solubility table, or we can remember if it has this ammonium ion here, it's probably going to be soluble. So this is going to be aqueous as well. 
We have the states. Now we split up the strong electrolytes. This is a weak electrolyte. We're not going to split it up. So we have 2 NH3 plus, we'll split the sulfuric acid up. H is plus 1, but we have two of them. So H plus plus SO4. Remember, that was 2 minus. And over here, the ammonium, that's 1 plus. So we have NH4, that positive charge there. But we have two of them. Put a 2 here. Plus, we have the sulfate, SO4. To minus. Take a quick look, make sure everything's balanced in terms of charge and number of atoms. Looks pretty good. Now we can cross out the things that are the same on both sides, those spectator ions. That's gone and that's gone. And we can write the net ionic equation. So remember a weak base like NH3, that's not going to break apart. Even though it's aqueous and it dissolves, it doesn't dissociate. It doesn't break apart into its ions, so we leave it together. And that's our net ionic equation. So that's it. We're done. If you're still with me, you should be a pro at net ionic equations. If you want more practice, because that's how you get really good at these, there is a link to a playlist with even more practice, which I hope you enjoy. This is Dr. B with Practice Writing Net Ionic Equations, and thanks for watching.